Wait a moment. This isn't a furry visual novel. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and as some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Echo. Guys, we're getting closer to our, we're getting closer to Halloween, and it's th I think things are just gonna get spookier around here. Ooh, I definitely think things are gonna get spookier in Echo, especially after that last episode. Jeez, ooh. That was a rough one. <laughs> it's probably gonna get rougher as we go on. Anyway, guys, let's jump right back into Echo and... Ugh. See if we can get a glimpse at whatever the hell that thing was. Alright, here we go. <clears throat> All right. I would've done it out the window. I don't want to open any of the windows now, though. It's okay. Leo, are there any napkins up there? Leo, who's been silent up until now, remains silent. He's staring at the windshield hard, paws on the wheel in a death grip. After a moment of silence, Kudzu checks the cup holders, then drops open the glove compartment. After rummaging around for a minute, he pulls out a stack of fast food style napkins. He hands them back to Carl, who starts mopping up whatever mess he's made on himself. During all this, I'm still glancing out the windows. Not head on though, because I'm terrified I'm going to look straight into those eyes again. We drive in silence for the next five minutes, with no creature in sight, thankfully. But I don't know what to think right now. There's no way what I saw was some animal, like Kudzu implied. The way it moved, the way it was crouched, and most of all, its face. I've never seen anything like it. At least, anything that's not a Halloween costume. Maybe, maybe one of the locals dressed up in a costume or something. Then how the fuck did it keep up with the car? Were we going that fast? Leo did slow down a little. I keep these thoughts to myself. Everyone looks freaked out enough without any more speculation. So instead, I lean back in my seat, deciding to just close my eyes. We're on our way out, and soon I'll be safe in a police station or a hospital or something. It'll be explained when the cops get here. I try not to think about Duke on the ground. Janice in the diner, Jenna out there somewhere with that thing. I shake my head, eyes still closed. Are, are you okay, Chase? TJ's arm is still around mine, in the places where our fur is pressed together, getting hot and sweaty. I don't mind, though, as long as it brings him some comfort. Yeah, I'm just... I'm tired. Actually, now that I mention it, I am pretty tired. I didn't exactly get much sleep in Kudzu's trailer, or Brian's. I start to drift off as my head bumps gently against the headrest, the soft whir of the AC on my forehead. What the fuck? The car lurches as Leo slows us down again. Reluctantly, I open my eyes, half expecting to see some other kind of nightmarish ghoul out the window. But I don't see anything. Just the road stretching ahead of us. What's wrong? Leo's quiet for a moment. I can't see his face since I'm right behind him, but I can see the outline of his twitching ears. I... I don't. Leo turns in his seat, looking out the passenger window, then his own. I'm heading the right way, right? I look out the window as well, not seeing anything except sagebrush and cacti. But then I do notice something. The mountains, which had been on the right are now on my left, rising up ominously in the distance. Have we turned around somehow? Unless we're on the highway, which we definitely aren't. This road merges right onto the highway. There's no way we could miss it. Mayor TJ gasps softly next to me. I look over at him. He's looking straight ahead, out the windshield. I do the same, and in the distance I can see headlights off the side of the road. No way. What is it? Leo brings the car to a hard stop, throwing me forward into the seatbelt. Then he does a quick three-point turn, shoving me, shoving me right and left before I'm smacked against, in before I'm smacked back into the seat as Leo accelerates again. Whoa, careful! My parents will kill me if you fuck up the ride. Carl laughs nervously, but no one pays attention to him. There's no fucking way. I was going straight. Um, there's that side road that takes you to some, takes you to some of the trails. Maybe we sort of went off on. Leo snaps at the link suddenly. There is no way, TJ. That road is fucking gravel. I would have noticed. 
Leo was hunched in his seat like an angry dad, staring out the windshield, his ears practically dancing on his head. I could feel TJ trembling, so I lean into him a bit, letting him know that I'm here. It's clear that Leo doesn't want any talking, so we're all quiet. This time I keep my eyes open, staring out the window in case Leo did get sidetracked somehow. I focus on the mountains, making sure that they don't disappear. They slope up and down gently under the moonlight, speckled with the dark spots of rock and vegetation. Vaguely, I remember back when I'd been obsessed with skateboarding and had always imagined myself skating those slopes on car trips to Peyton. Up and down. Up and down. If only Echo had anything like that. The only slope we had was the one down from Carl's mansion, but it was way too big. I tried to skateboard down it once, but that had ended with disaster when... I blink, staring out the window as the mountains just disappear, slope down into nothing. I squint and look out Carl's window. Sure enough, mountains. Leo? I know! Leo speeds up instead of turning back around, though. This is impfucking possible! What are you doing? TJ's claws come out against my skin again as he get as he gets that scared cat look in his eyes. Leo mumbles, mostly to himself. There's no way we're going back to Echo. Leo, slow down a little. Leo lets out a small growl but relents, and TJ's grip on my arm loosens some. I'm gonna keep going until I see that car, because I sure as hell didn't turn around that time. The tone in Leo's voice keeps any of us from arguing. Though I hate to admit it, something about his demeanor has me just as scared of him as I am of whatever it is out there. Another minute of driving, more awkward silence, and then... Leo hisses through his teeth. Straight ahead of us, the headlights appear. What? I must be dreaming. It's like we're stuck in some kind of loop. Leo slows down more and more until we come to a gentle stop. We sit there in silence, staring at my car about a hundred yards in front of us. Leo starts muttering dang darkly to himself, looking out the windows, looking at the dashboard. I want to ask him if he's okay, but I know what the answer is. TJ makes soft whimpering sounds next to me, like he's trying not to cry, and I finally put my arm around him. It's okay, it's just, it's dark, and we're going off-road somehow. I whisper whatever comes to my mind to explain what the fuck is happening. Carl has his head down in his paws, completely quiet. He could be asleep for all I know. I think about suggesting that maybe we should just wait it out until morning in the car. But as I open my mouth, I hear a scratching noise toward the back of the car. TJ's ears perk up, which lets me know that I'm not the only one. Instinctively, I turn around in my seat. Bits of glass fly into my face, and the next thing I know, I'm, co I'm cowering in the seat, head down as far as I can push it. Carl, very much awake now, screams at Leo. Go, go, go! Leo's already on it, and I feel the car jolt forward. Then I'm bouncing up and down on the seat as we go off-road, Leo not bothering with the three-point turn this time, instead going for a full U-turn. We're back on the asphalt and speeding down the road when I feel it's safe enough to raise my head back up and look out the back window. For a moment, I'm terrified that I'm going to find that thing crouched on the trunk, staring in at us. But instead, all I see is a giant hole through the back window, the remaining glass jagged. Are you guys okay? Leo looks back and forth between us and the road ahead of him. I sit up fully. I think so. I yell at him over the sound of the car and the wind whistling around behind me. Carl is bent over in his seat, too, brushing glass from his hat and hoodie. I look at TJ, who's still crouched over in his own seat, covering his head. Bits of glass are scattered on his back and in his head fur. I pick some of the pieces out from the fur on his neck and lean over him. TJ, are you okay? TJ shudders and doesn't say anything as I pluck some of the shards from under his collar. What was that? Kudzu shouts back at us, staring through the window. I don't know! I don't want to think about what I actually think it was. Leo keeps, us, Leo keeps up the high speed, hitting some of the potholes hard enough that I'm worried we're going to get a flat. Then we'd be in some real trouble. We drive on for another five minutes in silence. And then the headlights of my car appear in the front of us again. <sighs> this time, no one says anything and Leo doesn't bother turning around. I watch out my window as we fly past my old car. Duke is still there on the ground, no movement from where he was the last time we saw him. Since this is the area where the creature seems to be prowling, I look out the back window. I want to be ready in case it tries to come through again. But nothing happens. All I see is a small stretch of asphalt illuminated red from the taillights, 
and all I hear is the wind whipping away through my ears. I keep a hand on TJ's back as he continues to, rain, to remain hunched over. Carl sits quietly, staring out his window. On the bright side, the bashed-in back window has diminished the smell of sick. Sparse dots of light show up on the horizon, indicating where Echo is. That's when Leo speaks up. All right, what we're going to do is head back to my house. You guys can get some sleep while I figure out what to do next. Leo pauses, but no one says anything. Sound good? Yeah, not much left to do. Leo grunts and hunches forward in his seat again. There's a sinking feeling in my stomach at the thought of going back to Echo. There's the comfort of at least not being out in the wilderness, but I wonder if that's much worse than the town, even with that creature prowling around. Ugh. I stare out my window, watching the mountains move slowly back, move slowly by under the moonlight as we turn as we turn onto Lake Emma Road. I'm wondering if I'm take if I'm taking one of the mountain. Blah. I'm wondering if taking one of the mountain roads out of town would be worth it, whether we'd have enough gas when it happens. A crouched figure sits on the peak of a hill, just about 50 feet from where we are. I squint at it, just barely able to make out what looks like shoulders and a head hunched up under the light of the moon. Uh, I'm directly across from the thing when I open my mouth. But I'm barely able to make a sound when it moves. It dashes down the hill in the blink of an eye, covering the distance between it and our car in a matter of two seconds. One moment I'm staring at a tiny black figure, and the next it's right up against the car, smashing into the side between Leo's door and mine. My head smacks into the glass, and I see a flash of white. At the same time, I hear Kudzu shout at us to hold on. TJ screams. Carl yells. My feet are fucking freezing. I open my eyes and stare down at them. It's almost too dark to see, but I can hear the sounds of sloshing water and... screaming. Chase! Chase! What? My head aches, and there's something in my eyes that stings. Everything's blurry. Chase! Are you okay? A big paw prods at my chest, and I look up. I can barely make out the outline of ears. Leo? Wait. And it hits me like the car crash we were just in. That thing! I look out my window again, but it's all shattered and spiderwebbed, and, but I can see what looks like water pouring through it. At the same time, I feel like I feel that icy cold sensation running down my back as the water comes through the broken back window like a waterfall. We crashed into the fucking lake. Chase! I'm awake, I'm good! I grab at my seatbelt, taking way longer than it should to get undone. All the while, there's a bizarre, feral yowling sound next to me, and I don't realize it's TJ until his claws find my chest and, and arm and dig in. Ow! TJ, stop! Calm down! But he doesn't even respond, continuing on with that god-awful sound. Through the window! Carl's already up on the rear deck, trying to push through the water coming in. Come on! Carl's screaming, panicked voice disappears suddenly, and I can only hope that it's because he got out. Chase! Chase, come on, we need to get you out! I feel Leo's big paws grabbing at me, but I turn and push them away. I'm fine, let me help TJ! Chase! Leo, I'm a fucking otter. The water at this point is up to my chest. The car's front end is tipped down in the water, and with the sparse moonlight coming in through the back, I can see it's up to Leo's neck. Kudzu is somehow in the back with me and TJ, where Carl was. He's staring at me, eyes wide, looking torn between escaping and helping me. Go, Kudzu, through the window. Leo, go out through. Go out through your door. Chase! Go! I scream at basically everyone, and I can only hope they do as I say as I duck down and the water goes over my head. The quiet piece of underwater is a sharp contrast to the fucking chaos my brain is in. Somehow, in the wreck, the back seat crunched forward and TJ's seatbelt buckle button is lost somewhere in the crease. I grip my teeth. I can hold my breath almost ten minutes, but I know for most other species it's less than two. Far less if you're panicking out of your mind like TJ is. I grip my teeth as I calmly try to reach between the fold between the seat and the back despite the desperate clawing the, clawing the links is giving me. Again, though, it's far too wedged in to get a hold on. Soon, my calm demeanor melts away as I fumble uselessly with the seatbelt and time stubbornly marches on. I feel myself start to panic as I just grab TJ around the body and yank as hard as I can. But it's no use at all, and when I pull on the chest strap, it's jammed and I can't get any slack. TJ's grasping and clawing starts to become weaker. I try to think of something to use to cut the strap, but there's nothing. 
Maybe a shard of glass? I move up and away from TJ, toward the back window, trying to ignore how he weakly tries to clutch at me. As I reach up to the seat, though, my hand slips between the headrest and the rear deck. I reach in further and realize it's the trunk of the car. With a lunge, I reach down and feel along the bottom of the seat of the seat back. My paw runs up against something hard and metal, and I know I've found what I'm looking for. I grab up the buckle and unlatch it. Swimming around as quickly as I can, I grab the strap across TJ's chest and set my feet against the seat. I pull back as hard as I can, and just like that, it comes undone. I scoop TJ up, his limp body giving me an extra burst of adrenaline as I set my feet against the back of the driver's seat and push out. My aim is a little off as my head hits the ceiling instead, but I'm able to find the hole pretty quickly and kick through it. It's a little awkward to undulate my body into a nice clean swim with TJ's weight, but I manage it well enough and within seconds we break the surface. I breathe out into the air while TJ coughs and sputters. His arms wrap around my neck tightly and I have to put a paw under his arms to keep him from strangling me. TJ, we're good! You're good! Calm down! I look around and I'm amazed to see how far we are from the shore. It's a good hundred yards away. I can already see Kudzu standing there, and Leo's in the shallows shouting to Carl, who's a few feet further in, splashing around. I kick off in that direction as TJ continues to hyperventilate into my ear. TJ, it's okay. Remember when you used to ride on my back in the lake? It's like that, like old times. I try to... Ooh, excuse me. I try to adopt a soothing tone between my ragged gasp for air. TJ does finally settle on my back, though, though his arms are still around my neck. Still a lot better than him dragging me down with him. His gasps calm down as we get closer to the shore, tapering off into a weird sort of mumbling sound. I can make out a few words, though, and one of them is a name. Sydney. I frown and swim a bit faster, wanting to get him to dry land so that he can get his wits back together. Meanwhile, Carl finally grabs onto Leo's outstretched paws and the wolf pulls him back to shore. All the while, he stares at me and TJ intently. He... He didn't... He didn't deserve... Shh. I shush him gently as I finally feel my toes find the sandy bottom of the lake. I gently pull the links back with me to the narrow strip of, land, of sand between the lake and the incline that, shaves, that slopes up to this road. Carl's already there, flat on his back, spread eagle, so I do the same with TJ, laying him down right next to the ram. He's still trying to talk, though. Chase! It, it's Sydney. How long did he... did he... Gently, I put my paw over the lynx's muzzle. It's all right, man. Try to relax. Breathe. Kudzu stands next to me and starts to reach out to touch my shoulder. You okay? And then a much, and then a much larger paw comes out from behind me, pushing Kudzu's arm aside. And as I'm pulled back into a tight hug, Leo huffs into my ear. Thank God! Thank God! You were under for so long. I'm okay. I reach back with a paw, setting it against the side of Leo's face. When I bring it back, I see that it's a bit darker than it should be. I look back and immediately see the gash on the side of Leo's face. Shit, your head! Leo brushes off my paws. Your head! I think we both hit our windows when something hit us! I reach up, feeling around my forehead before I feel a sore, sticky spot in my fur. It isn't a bad cut, but it's definitely leaking a good amount of blood. If it's not a bad cut, then it wouldn't be leaking a good amount of blood, now would it? <laughs> it was that thing that we saw next to Duke. I saw it standing on a hill, and it just ran at us. I look over at Kudzu, who's moved to the, who's moved to stand over Carl, his arms hugging his chest tightly. Kudzu, are you okay? I'm fine. His response is tense and a little high-pitched. I don't know about Carl, though. He had a little trouble swimming back. Carl lets out a choked cough in response. I gently pull Leo, pull away from Leo and kneel down next to the ram between him and TJ. He's conscious, luckily, though. His panting is a bit shallow. I set a paw gently on his head. You okay? Uh, yeah? He says it like he's asking me a question. You sure? I mean, yeah, I'm breathing. I didn't mean to leave you guys, but... It's fine. Staying with us would have made things way worse. It's strange to me how collected I am right now. I guess it's that some numbing... I guess it's that numbing feeling that I've felt since escaping Brian's trailer. Just take the fucked up stuff in and roll with it. I'm not bad at swimming, but it was so fucking cold and my clothes felt like a million pounds. Looking at his thick sweater, it isn't a surprise at all. He just quieted down next to me. His eyes are open, staring up at the sky as he chuffs quietly. They're so wide and glassy I can see the reflection of the stars twinkling in them. 
I tentatively reach out and rest a paw on his head, like I did with Carl. TJ barely reacts, continuing to stare up at the sky. Tiege? I feel Leo's huge presence crunch down next to me as he gets close and whispers into my ear. It's free real estate. No, I, I'm sorry. No. Mm -mm. Well, strike that. I'm going to lighten it a little bit. <clears throat> All right. Listen, we should get going to my house. I don't like being out here, especially if that thing really did do it. But, TJ, I don't know if he's able. I'll carry him. And he does, scooping the links up into his arms like he's a baby. All right, come on. We can rest at my house. Let's just get the fuck out of here. Leo starts trekking up the rocky slope. Kudzu and I wait for Carl, who lays on the ground a moment longer, before finally rolling over and getting laboriously to his feet. Ooh, all right, guys, I was right. That got a lot worse. We almost lost TJ there. Jeez. Ooh, that thing came right at us. Man. Ooh. All right, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. This has been a new, terrifying episode of Echo. I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!